Previously, he worked at the Irish Examiner, Meltwater and Irish Sports Agency, as well as an Irish and international client list, research and analysis analyst carried out by O'Leary Analytics has been used by major national and international broadcasters, including RTE, TV3, BBC and The Washington Post. The title of Stephen's presentation is The Value of Listening Before Speaking. And I'd like to welcome Stephen there now to the podium. Thank you. Um, thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, no one told me about a weather warning. Um, so uh, I came regardless. Um, I'm, also, I'm from Cork. Uh, I was born here. I lived here until I was 18. Um, I only left because at the time there wasn't um, a full-time journalism course um, in the city and I wanted to be a journalist. I thought I wanted to be a journalist. Um, so I moved to Dublin uh, and studied in Griffith College for three years. Uh, when I graduated I got a job about two doors down in the examiner um, and I was there for I was there for about a year. Left, moved to Dublin and worked for a software company from Scandinavia called Meltwater. Um, was with them for about two years. Uh, then left to try and become a sports agent, um, which was a very interesting year. Um, not very successful, but interesting. Um, and then in late 2009, um, I set up O'Leary Analytics. And essentially what we do is we're a social media and online media monitoring and analysis company. Um, and very simply, we listen to what people say online. So we monitor conversations and we try to make sense of them um, for our clients. Uh, some of our clients are big, I suppose, like multinationals. Um, so we work with the likes of Disney and EA Games. Um, the State Examination Commission are an interesting client, listening to what students say during the Leaving Cert and the Junior Cert. Um, we work with the likes of Electric Ireland and Rabo Direct. And um, like we said, we've had some of our analysis published globally um, in the Washington Post and the BBC. Uh, this is something I want to show you because, well, it, it's something that we've just, um, we've just, I suppose, kind of figured out how to do. Um, and it's a big thing for us is being able to break down information geographically. So if you run a hotel and you want to know what people are saying about hotels online, you're probably most concerned with what people are saying in Ireland if you're an Irish-based hotel. But if you're a Cork hotel like the Clarion, you're probably even more interested to see what people are saying specifically in Cork in relation to hotels. And you can search for the word Cork and hotel and you'll get back things from people who are talking about hotels in Cork. But what you miss out on is people who are already in Cork and talking about hotels. So what we've done is we've broken down coverage on a county by county <coughs> basis and it's something we've only really developed in the last couple of weeks. So I was keen to maybe actually show you this on a moving slide, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get that up on the actual presentation here. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like maybe as it builds. Let's see. <coughs> well, this is what it would look like at the end. Imagine all those things moving rapidly, um, and you'll get an idea of what's, what's going on here. Um, and what it allows us to do, I suppose, is um, in the client in question is um, a mobile phone company. And every month they're really interested in what people are saying about their service and the level of service. Um, and they're particularly interested in what that's like across the country. So if people in Galway are suffering from poor coverage or if people in Cork, you know, are being harassed by um, people selling their service, they want to know what's happening on a county by county basis. And we've just gotten to the stage where we can start to provide that kind of information. But this evening, um, what I want to talk to you about um, is the value of listening to what people say about your event. I was sent a, a list of attendees and I had a look across the range and it's really diverse. You know, there seems to be people here from the drinks industry, um, tourism, marketing, students from CIT, you know, it's right across the board. And <coughs> sometimes I'll look at a particular industry and try and focus in on that. But given the broad ranging audience, I decided to take an event instead because all of you have an interest in marketing. Um, and in the course of your marketing, you're probably going to be organizing events of some sort. And it's what happens when you listen to what people say about your event. And people talk an awful lot about events that they go to, and they talk an awful lot about um, those events online. And they tend to be a lot more honest in what they say online than perhaps what they say to you um, to your face at the end of an event or before an event actually starts. Uh, if anyone wants to ask me questions during the evening, this is what you'll catch me on, Stephen O'Leary. Um, 
so we're going to look at Arthur's Day um, from last year. So it's an event, I suppose, that's just finished this time around. Um, and we're going to look at the conversations that took place. And one thing that we often get asked is, should we be on, you know, should we set up a Facebook page? Or should we have a Twitter account? Um, or should we have a profile on Flickr? Um, where should we be on, you know, talking about what it is we do and telling people about what it is we do? And I firmly believe, and as a company, we firmly believe that there is tremendous value that instead of going on and speaking and instead of going on and telling people about who you are and what you do, that if you start to listen first, what people are saying about you or your event or your organization or even your industry, if they're not talking about you, um, what are they saying about your industry? You can learn a huge amount and it can inform the kind of conversations you go on to have. Um, and it probably means that you're going to be listened to an awful lot more. So what we looked at was the month of September last year. Um, we looked on a global basis and we were lucky because, oh, I should probably also point out, Diageo are not a client. So we were not commissioned to do this piece. Um, we did this out of interest. We wanted to see what the reaction was like to an event that we knew divided opinion. We knew there were lots of people who looked forward to the day, but we also knew that there were people, particularly in certain parts of the country, that didn't particularly like the day. Um, and we wanted to see what that reaction was like online and what kind of feedback people gave on the event. So we had various kind of keywords that we searched for, things like Arthur's Day, Guinness 250, Arthur Guinness Day, the various ways we found people talking about your event or, or about the event that's happening. And again, when you're looking, if you organize an event um, or if you have a company name, um, what I would encourage you to do if you're searching for people talking about you is try and use variations. Use the things that are um, misspelled. Um, a really good way of finding out what this list is like is if you've got a website, and you have Google Analytics, you can see the search words people put in to try and find your company. So all the time I find search strings that pe bring people to our sites for quite bizarre things, but usually it's Stephen O'Leary Analytics. They don't see the separation. They think it's kind of just all one. Um, so one thing we're working on at the moment is actually changing our name because Stephen O'Leary and O'Leary Analytics should be two separate things because now there's more than just me. There's an actual group of us. Um, Sentiment, the big thing for us when it comes to sentiment, and we're going to look at some examples, you can use an algorithm. So you can use a piece of software that will tell you this is positive and this is negative, and it looks at keywords, and it tries to match keywords to the search term you're looking for. But the problem is, particularly in Ireland, um, we're probably the most sarcastic country that I've ever analysed. Um, if you look at conversations around a brand in the UK, our conversations around a brand in the US, you know, when people say, oh great, it's raining, they're actually happy that it's raining. Um, whereas in Ireland, it's a, it's a very different thing. So invariably, we need to manually cross-reference a lot of the data. So we, uh, as an analyst has to sit down and go through content and make a judgment call on it. Is this positive or is this negative? Um, that also applies when we're looking at things that aren't necessarily related to a brand. So sometimes we look at things about um, mental health, for example which is a really interesting area to look at the kind of conversations people have online in relation to mental health and mental health issues. And things that we would deem negative, those in mental health organizations may deem very positive because the conversation is happening. No matter what the subject matter, it's actually happening. Uh, and also popularity will come to in a little bit. So this is what we found. We had about 11,000 results. Um, Twitter was definitely the main area for conversations about Arthur's Day. I uh, counted for 77%. Um, Boards.ie, though, was the most prominent domain. And one thing, if you take a takeaway from this evening in relation to um, listening to what people say about you online, try not to forget, um, despite all the hype around Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and sites like this, the power of message boards and forums in Ireland. They're huge. Board, there, is, there is nothing like Boards.ie in other countries. It just, it, it's got this kind of uniqueness in Ireland in terms of the volume of conversation. And it's a place where a huge number of people go. And it's not alone. Um, like there's loads of parenting forums like Roller Coaster, which you know, people will talk about you know, very, very small purchasing de decisions like baby food, right up to four and five figure decisions around a new car. And they will go on there and they will consult their peers. And they have much deeper levels of conversation than you find sometimes on Twitter and Facebook. And you get a much more diverse range of, of opinions and ideas. 
So it wasn't a surprise for us, the boards that he was at the top, any of our clients. If you take any of our Irish clients, message boards and forums are the most prominent areas for their conversations. Sometimes that's because they've got their own presence. So some of the companies we work with actually have an active presence. They've got their own area on boards that they, where customers can come along and tell them what they're thinking. But for others, they've got no presence at all. Um, and yet the conversations are still happening. So the highest potential audience for the day came from Nikki Byrne and Paloma Faith, um, both of whom performed. Um, and other famous personalities raised awareness. But overall, sentiment towards Arthur's Day was actually very positive. Four to one, which kind of surprised us a little bit because when I talked amongst my peers on the day, yeah, there was excitement and people wanted an excuse to go for a pint at six o'clock. But it's not really hard to get an excuse to go for a pint at six o'clock. Um, uh, and I certainly heard lots of people who gave out about it. So we're going to look at the conversations that happened on both sides. When you're listening to what people say, there are two things to, to take into consideration. There's the quantitative stuff and there's the qualitative stuff. And both are important. So for example, at the end of tonight's event, we could take the hashtag MII Cork and look at the volume of people who talked. Maybe compare that to previous events and see what the comparison was like. But the qualitative stuff is very important too. So you might have increased conversation by 100%, but if sentiment dropped by 60%, then yes, loads more people talked, but they didn't enjoy the talk or they weren't happy. So it's important to look at both. And remember that it's, you know, just because more people talked about your event or your company week on week or month on month or year on year, that's not necessarily a good thing. And sometimes for some of our clients, when their volume of conversation goes down, especially in the utility area, it's a real positive because it usually means less people are complaining or giving out. So that's what a month looks like. Very little conversation for about the first 15 days. Then about a week out, as TV and print and radio started to ramp up, um, more and more conversations happened. Then Arthur's Day happened. And then there was a spin-off of conversations afterwards. Again, maybe something to consider is that if you organize an event um, or you're involved in marketing an event, just because the event finishes doesn't necessarily mean that the conversations around it will finish. So when you are evaluating the success in terms of conversation around your event, try to bear in mind that the 24, 48, 72 hours after the event can often be just as important. This is where the conversations happen. So we split it out kind of into a, a, a type by type. Twitter was huge. And Twitter is, when you, when you have an event, like any of you in the room who've got a smartphone, the easiest way for you to actually tell other people what's going on here is via Twitter. It works well as a medium. It's very open. It's a great way to share. And that's why, the, why it's important to have a good hashtag for an event. Because it means if someone's not in the room but wants to be here, they can be at home and they can be in the car, they can be anywhere, and they can have a stream of tweets coming through uh, relating to the event. Message boards and forums came in. There was a number of conversations on Facebook. A lot of them were driven by Guinness themselves. There were blog posts. Lots of people shared videos and photos, especially at a particular time of the day. Um, and there was a lot of editorial comment as well. Um, editorial comment is where people go on to news websites and leave comments underneath. So one of the best um, sites for that in Ireland at the moment is probably the Journal. I'm not sure if any of you have looked at the journal's website, but they do a particularly good job of encouraging people to comment on their stories. And the one thing that I think they do better than lots of other news organizations is they allow you not only to comment, but to rank the comments. So if someone comes on and says something absolutely ridiculous or offensive, well, if it's offensive, they'll remove it. But if it's ridiculous or it doesn't add to the conversation, people can let the person know that they don't like their, their comment or conversation. So you can quickly scan to see what comments and conversations have ranked highest. We then put the two pieces of information and overlay them. And what we get is, um, I suppose, the various spikes. So Twitter on the day was very, very important. And we knew that. It was the biggest medium anyway. But it's, you know, it, like it, it works very well. You've got a pint in one hand and you've got a smartphone in the other. And it's kind of like to mark that. And, you know, you've got your pint and you're, you're tweeting or you're letting people know what you're doing or you're taking a photograph. And it just works. But what we're interested in, too, is what happens around this. So on boards.ie the day before, Arthur's Day is a load of bollocks. Discuss. Um, and on the day of it, on Facebook, there was a simple post saying, Happy Arthur's Day. And there was an, all, an awful lot of commentary around that. And sometimes that information gets lost if you don't break it out by type. So we look at the top 10 domains. Well, we look at the top 100, but we'll show you the, we'll show you the 10 here. Um, 
And probably something else, just incidentally, if you are recording information to do with your event, um, or if you're recording mentions of your brand and you're storing them and you want to look at them and, and look at how things build, try if you can to use Excel or PowerPoint or both. Um, one of the things that, for me, there's nothing more frustrating than seeing a report on an event that's in a PDF because it's static. You can't do anything with it. Yes, you can see what happens there and then, but you can't actually do anything with it. Whereas with our reports and the way we build these, they're all based in Excel. So if you've got things like ticket sale numbers, and you can tell day by day because of your ticket sale technology what days the biggest sales happened, then you can start to overlay information and it gets really interesting. If you're a utility and you're acquiring or losing customers, you can overlay the number of customers you gain on a day when you've got lots of positive sentiment with the number of customers you lose on a day when you've got very negative. And you can get some real trends. Like what we do is interesting, and I like what we do, and it's definitely got a value, but it becomes really valuable when the client starts putting their own information on top. Marketing spend. We do an awful lot of work with advertising agencies who want to test whether the effectiveness of their ad spend in a local newspaper, on a local radio station, on a TV station, has had, a, has had an impact in conversation. So when we put out these ads, are more people talking about the product or brand as a result? Now, lots of these you'll probably recognize, boards.ae, YouTube, Broadsheet, Flickr for photos. But again, the parenting website, rollercoaster.ie, where a huge conversation sprung up amongst parents concerned about their teenagers going out and drinking on our Tuesday, and whether or not there would be tighter controls in pubs in relation to people drinking at 6 o'clock. Um, the individual Twitter accounts at the end, Guinness Ireland, you will recognize. Um, and the last one we will come to. But the one that stood out for me, well, the second one that stood out for me, Poutless is really interesting. Poutless is a website where people can um, sell tickets um, without going through a tout. And they've got one golden rule. You're not allowed to sell a ticket for above its face value. So if you want, if you've got a ticket for a sellout event and you want it to go to another fan, if you're a music fan in Ireland, you'd probably go to Poutless because you don't want um, it to get into the hands of the pet. And it's a really, really good system. But what was interesting was 114 people commented in relation to gigs that were happening on Arthur's Day on Poutless. But the one that stood out for me, and obviously given the talk I'm giving this evening, was this, Jen. The People's Republic of Cork, one of my favorite forums. I don't comment a lot on it, but my God, Cork people comment on it all the time. Um, and there was, understandably, an awful lot of conversation about the event. Um, it wasn't all bad. Some of it was good. There was an element of excitement about events that were happening in Cork, but the gem for me, and one of the things that, you know, when you're going through 11,000 comments, you need something to pick you up, was this. Now, Fuzz MacG, who's a member online, said, will it be as good as Cromfest 2011? My entirely fictional Oliver Cromwell-inspired music <coughs> event, sponsored by a drinks brand, the purpose of which is to shift a load of booze by having musicians play in front of lots of drinking, talking people, and so on. But then they went a step forward and actually set up a Facebook page for Cromfest 11. Welcome to Cromfest, the celebration of the remarkable legacy of Oliver Cromwell, known as Ollie to his many friends, and so on. Now, when things like this happen, there's, really an awful, there's not an awful lot that Guinness can do. Things like this are going to happen. Um, but it does give you an idea that if you're not Guinness, and you want to play up an event they've got, could you be creative? You can't have a prom fest, by the way. I'm not suggesting anyone does. But there's probably things you could do around this. They've been successful with it. What, what kind of things could you play up around it that might be, um, that might be appropriate? One of my favorite, um, I don't like the word viral, one of my favorite videos I've seen in the last 12 months, and one of my favorite apps on my phone, although I can never use it, because you can only use it in Cork, is the Murphy's app when it rains and pours. I think it's amazing. I love the fact that I get a message saying, it's lashing rain in Cork, you can claim a free pint. Uh, you know, I think it gets Cork people, it gets Cork humour, and it works really, really well. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen it, when it rains, it pours. You can download it in the App Store, it's great fun. Um, and it's much better if you're in Cork, obviously, because you get free pints. Um, we then look at the popularity of the people that talk, and we use software to calculate this. This is probably one of the first times where the software really comes into it. And it applies a score to every person who comments. 
and it takes into it takes into factor um, things like the number of people following the person on Twitter, the number of friends or fans they have on Facebook, um, or the number of people who have viewed their thread on boards. It's you know it works really really well, but you don't need software to do this. If you collect the tweets or the posts or the mentions of your event um, or your brand or whatever it is you have organised. You can go in and you can create your own score. So you take the most popular person who talked about your event, maybe who's got a couple of thousand mentions, um, and then you take the least popular, maybe someone who's got 10 or 15 followers, and you create your own scoring. But what's good is you can then figure out who are the really influential people who talked about my event and make sure that you engage with them the next time the event happens. So Nikki Byrne, for example, almost at the time of writing um, a quarter of a million followers on Twitter, he was in China playing a gig. Prompt, unprompted sent out a message um, with a link to a photograph. Paloma Faith, another artist, again almost a quarter of a million followers. Not long to go until I perform with Artist Day. Check in on Facebook to donate money to the Arthur Guinness Fund. So again she was kind of playing on the charity element. And if you've got a charity aspect to your event, it's a great way to get people to share things. Because people find it much easier from our experience to share things when they feel they're doing it for good and not just to promote an event or a brand. Um, Laura Whitmore from MTV, is everyone enjoying the day? Joshua Radin, flying to Dublin today for Arthur's Day, my goodness, my Guinness, um, and so on. And the next metric we look at are, when we strip away the, the top people, those who've got all the influence, we want to look at people who talk a lot. We're interested in people who talk an awful lot about our event, our event. And this is really, really important if you... Um, if you're concerned about what you should be saying online, how you should be interacting, or crucially, who you should be interacting with. Because there are probably people already talking about what it is you do. I was again looking at the list today, um, and I think there was um, people who were down who worked in the health industry. Um, there was people who worked in um, fitness and things like this. Now, people may not know your brand name, or you may not have a thousand fans or friends on Facebook, but people are invariably talking about what it is you do. And what you want to do is identify those people. See are they happy or sad about the, not necessarily the service you provide, but the service in general. So that could be, for example, personal fitness or personal training. And then join the conversation. So in Guinness's case, these were the top 10 people who talked about the event last year. If they had employed us to do a report like this, one of our recommendations would have been find out who these people are and engage back. Make sure they're invited along to events next year. Were they happy or unhappy? And can we do something about that? What's really interesting for us too is that there's only one media partner on here. RTE2FM, make the top 10 authors. Now if I've got to divvy up a budget, a marketing budget, amongst lots of media outlets, and I'm told I'm getting X amount of value from my radio airtime, I'm getting X amount from my TV, and I'm getting X amount from my print or my online. If a broadcaster or a newspaper can turn around and say, yeah, we were actually also one of your top 10 tweeters, or we talked about you an awful lot last year, and we said things, we promoted amongst our own audience. That added value can be really valuable in terms of deciding, well, okay, we're going to stick with RT2FM next year, and maybe not go with... Today FM or whoever else the, the other radio partners may be. Sorry, yeah. Who are these? Some of them are board study users. Yeah, they are. And what about who, who else? Is uh, well, Guinness is obviously Guinness's official page, so this would probably mm -hmm. a lot of that would come from Guinness themselves. We haven't identified them. Usually, what we'll do is we'll go with the list and we'll say you'll probably know who some of these people are because you interact with them or they you know they talk about you an awful lot. But maybe you haven't, you know, you might see them from time to time, but don't realize that they're actually one of your top five or top ten authors. And the hope is that when the client sees this and maybe delves in behind the top 100, they'll actually say, okay, here are the people that when I start to talk, I should be talking to. Because they're already talking about me. And they're probably not all happy. And some of these people I will have to say, okay, look, why, what are you, now, with artists, then, there's going to be people who are annoyed anyway. You're not going to change their mind. I prefer markets. It's that simple. But in some cases, it might be, I ordered tickets and they never came. Or you promised Artist X was coming to Venue Y and it didn't happen. And if they go on and they give out and it just hangs and no one answers it, person gets annoyed and it doesn't look good. 
Whereas if you go on, you can say, we're sorry that happened. We realized there was a problem. We'll give you a complimentary ticket for next year or, or whatever you decide to do is the, the best solution. But yeah, often, like, I mean, we look at thousands and thousands of people every day who we don't know. And we'll go in the client and go, ah, John. And it'll say something like, Listerment, you know? <laughs> um, okay, so that's, kinda, that's the number stuff. This is the, this is the good stuff, really. This is the kind of stuff we like talking about, qualitative analysis. Um, so we wanted to look at the kind of things, the kind of emotions that the day brought up. And again, they're not all good, but some of them are good. So I cannot concentrate today. I'm like a kid on Christmas Day, except I'm worse. I'm a student on Arthur's Day. Um, I have fond memories of Arthur's Day to Arthur and to make Arthur's Day a bank holiday. Now, much as you might try and control your hashtag, people in the audience will do completely different things. And this is not usable. It's not handy. It's not good but sometimes your audience will go up to them and you've got to let that happen but what you do is you make sure you take a record of that and use that as a search term when you're finished with your event or you come to the end of your week or your month and you want to look back at what people were saying um just back from Arthur's Day this is really interesting too um what we saw here was you know people talking about the individual artists they saw and we're going to look at the top 100 words in a minute um but if I was the booker Let's say we had 100 artists for the event, or let's say we had two speakers tonight, and one speaker got a really good reaction, and the other speaker got slated. And yet at the end, everyone said, oh, yeah, they were great. Really enjoyed both of them. Thanks very much. <laughs> but you went online afterwards, and you saw a difference. It would probably influence who you booked to speak at your next event. It's the same, again, if I was Guinness, I would have looked to see what people's reactions were like to artists. So people liked the Charlton's. Awesome. Carl Bora doing Don't Look Back Into The Sun has the Savoy Hopping. That was in Cork. And then there's the excitement. And this is one of the things that they did really well. It's the element of anticipation and not knowing where things are happening. Word in the street is Scissor Sisters in the Globe. And you can imagine someone on the street, someone passing and saying, I hear Scissor Sisters are up in the Globe. Come on, we'll go up. And someone getting out their phone. Anyone around thinks Scissor Sisters are in the Globe. Um, Arthur's Day, home of the storehouse, how we wish to be there. Um, the enemy are rocking it. Good morning, the script. Can't wait to see you. Um, and then you get the negative stuff. So actively avoiding Arthur's Day. Mass marketing of Ireland's most boring stuff, not to my taste. Don't know if Matt is from Cork. He is. Is he? Is he in the room? He's in business. Oh, does he? Okay. Okay, good. I'm, I'm waiting for someone to throw something at the stage. Yeah. Um, well, the app you like, the creator of the app was here at the desk. Oh, really? Okay, yes. Um, yeah, I absolutely love that. Um, so how long before Hallmark and Setter bring out Arthur's Day cards and we have to give Arthur's Day presents? The worst thing about Arthur's Day is listening to all the talk about how it's a marketing ploy, blah, blah, blah. So people, you know, it divides opinion. Not everyone likes the day, some people, you know, and this kind of stuff is interesting, but you can't really do an awful lot about it. Like Guinness have pretty much went and said, we're turning this into a day where people drink our product. And that's, you know, we're not making it, we're not sort of trying to dress it up at all. That's just what this is. I totally agree with you, ridiculous, marketing gone mad, and then hats off to one of the best marketing initiatives ever. So, so what we do is we take all the conversations, we took the event at the 11,000, we pumped them in, and again, you can do this. Um, there is an app, a free app online called Wordle, W-O-R-D-L-E dot net. And again, if anyone doesn't get that now and wants to ask me later, I'll give it to them. Um, and what it allows you to do is to create images like this. It's free, 100% free. And what it does is you put in a list of your top 100 words. Now the software does that for us, but if you've got an Excel sheet and you put in all of your, um, your tweets or your Facebook posts or whatever it is you've been finding or searching for, you can run a, a, just a, a search function and it'll tell you how many mentions there are of certain words. And what we get is an image weighted on the number of mentions. Now, obviously, Arthur's Day is a search term, so it's going to make everything else look tiny behind, and this doesn't really tell us an awful lot. But what we can do in Wordle is we can remove some of the words. So if we remove Arthur's Day and Arthur's Day and that stuff around, we get a much better picture. It brings everything proportionally further forward. And this is when we get stuff that's really interesting. So we know that tickets for the events are a big thing for people. It's not just going to the pub and having a pint. People are interested in getting tickets to see the act they want to see. But for me, one of the big, one of the big takeouts that are here is, if you see just above Arthur's Day in Live, there's the word tile, and then slightly further up next to City, Cruise. Now, I would never have considered Tile Cruise the biggest act as part of Arthur's Day. I felt they were much bigger. But the audience says differently, especially the audience who are talking online. 
He is the standout artist from 2011 in terms of the event. He was the person, in terms of conversation, and it's one of your metrics, and for a lot of companies now, talk, chat online is one of the metrics they're using to measure success. And if you were deciding what artists to bring back next year, Tyler Cruz would have been top of my list if I was in the Azure, right at the top. First name, because I know he got people talking. I'd also love to know where did he, where did he play? Were there more people in the venue he was in than other places? Was there better Wi-Fi in the venue he was in than other places? Sorry, can I just ask you? Yeah. Do you think that, do you use the two events whether it's positive or negative? Like if everybody was saying that they, like their very presence, they were absolutely rubbish. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, you can. Now, the, this graphic isn't interactive, so you can't click on the words. But whatever, like, you're, if you do any of this, we do it through a piece of software, but it's still based on raw data. You'll do the same. So if you're searching for something, whether you've got a paid for tool or a free tool, or you're just manually collecting, you'll go in and you'll start to assign a score to the bits of information, positive, negative. And then you can start cross-referencing. So for example, yes, were all the mentions of Tyler Cruz negative? We searched into it, they weren't. People liked to gig. Um, people loved his set. But yes, you can definitely figure out. And what you can do is you can create two word clouds. Great one for your positive, and we do that for some of our clients, especially clients that are going through a name change. So we work with a utility that um, I won't name, but was rebranded recently, which probably narrows it down. <laughs> and they're really interested in perspectives um, towards our public perception, sorry, towards their old brand name and their new brand name. And we create two wordles. One wordle has mentions of them, and one has mentions of their old brand name. And we compare the two to see what kind of language people are using for the new brand name and the old brand name. So yeah, you can, I mean, this is the first graphic. You can go off in as many directions as you want with it. You really can get very creative. And as I say, it's free to use online, so anyone can, anyone can access this. Um, then we do the sentiment analysis. Um, and we did not go through all 11,000 results. Um, I should probably point that out now, uh, because this was not a commissioned piece. We did this out of interest. But we went through the negatives. So there's a, there's a chance that some of that neutral content may have a positive or negative slant. What we went through was the very negative somewhat, the somewhat and the very positive. And we went through just to make sure that that content was right. And what we found was that the positive content definitely outweighed the negative on a scale of about four to one. And what we're interested in here is, when we do this, is not I hate Arthur's Day or I love Arthur's Day, but is there anything that we can actually use? So at the end of your event or at the end of your week or month as a company or organization, what are the kind of actionable, it's a cliche, actionable insights, right? But it's probably a term some of you have heard before. What are the actionable insights you can have? Now, I really want to show you this, but I've got to figure out how to show it to you um, on this. And I may need tech help um, because I couldn't show it to you on the last slide. So I'm not sure if someone down the back can just change the view I've got here in mind. Just for a second. I just want to show you, this is a motion chart. I just want to show you what the day looked like. Um, and I need to be able to, uh, <coughs> so this is what I'm saying. This will take just a second. I just want to be able to play it. I'm like, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a better view. Perfect. If you, if you click on there, it should play. OK, great. So as this builds, this is a minute by minute breakdown of the 24 hours of Arthur's Day. So every time someone says something online, it leaves a timestamp. So we took those 11,000 comments, or maybe about nine or 10 that happened on the day, and we timestamped them. And we figured out, so every one of those dots is a mention. So you've got early morning, mid-afternoon about now, and then someone in the middle of the afternoon says, trying to get people to celebrate Arthur's Day by supporting Irish microbreweries, and then it goes off the chart because 1759 happens, and literally everyone has a pint in one hand and a smartphone in the other. And they're going to go into Martha, this is great, I'm having a great time, I want everyone to know I'm having a great time. And they're using the branding that, um, that Arthur and Guinness and Co. want. But what's really interesting here is we can see the times of the day when things went wrong. So there's a couple of things going on here, just to let you know. Sorry, that builds very quickly. Um, the, the axis on the left here is sentiment. So the blue line that kind of stays steady along here is neutral. Anything above the line is positive. Anything below the line is negative. And the size of the bubble is the volume of conversation in that minute. So the bigger the bubble, uh, the more conversations have happened on that particular minute. 
So not a lot really happens sort of like between midnight and four o'clock in the morning, although a lot of people do give out. I'm really <coughs> not looking forward to our today, you know? So this is probably people who are coming in like two or three in the morning and going, oh geez, I gotta go out tomorrow night. <laughs> and then in the middle of the afternoon, so you see sort of people get into work and they kind of go, so where are people going? What are you doing? Where are people going tonight? Where are people going to see? And then you get people who don't like that level of conversation and say, oh, that's all a marketing scam. And there was a, there was a, a thread started on boards that I, and we saw this huge dip for a minute as those of you went down and said, yeah, it is a marketing scam. And I don't like going to Twitter, but where are you going? I might join you. <laughs> and then a little further into the afternoon, and I loved this. Some microbrewery thought it would be a great idea to jump on the bandwagon and say, try to get people to celebrate Arthur's Day by supporting Irish microbreweries. <laughs> so at 7059, throw up a pint of Guinness, have a Belfast Pale Ale, or you know, have something, you know, something from Dungarvan, or have something that's different. Um, and then invariably at, at 1759, you see what happens. The chart just goes off the scale, and it is, everyone is having a good time too. You, know, you see the sentiment. It's not just volume, but sentiment goes up. And then every minute afterwards, as people kind of, the 3G network comes back to life in Dublin, and um, it's like Christmas Eve. It's crazy. But that's what a 24 hours looks like. That's kind of what goes on on a minute by minute basis during the events. And this is only something we've figured out how to do really in the last kind of couple of months. So I love showing it to everybody. It's kind of like a new, it's like a new child, it's great. Um, the sample negative content, yeah. So I'm showing you this because uh, this actionable insights thing I talked about. When you listen to what people say about you online, you need to obviously have a relatively thick skin. People say things that are not nice without justification an awful lot of the time. Um, people will give out about your brand without good reason. I don't know if there's anyone in the room who's involved in the hotel business, but you'll see TripAdvisor reviews that you know are not true, and they break your heart, I'm sure. Okay. Um, but for that small percentage of bad things, there's usually lots of really kind of good things. And the people who say bad things, but are constructive, are really good. <coughs> like Brian Lim, they obviously have events all over the world, or they did last year. Um, and this was in Malaysia. First and last time going to Arthur's Day, events sucked. Parking management sucked, tons of roadblocks. Mm -hmm. So if I was in Diageo, Malaysia, I would want to know, okay, what event did Brian go to and what was the traffic problem? Because whatever went wrong with the traffic meant Brian got <laughs> to his event rate, parking management was good, he did not have a good time. And I would like to ensure that next year that doesn't happen. I'd also like to find out who was responsible. Who was responsible for the parking management in relation to my event? Because that's something I can change. That's something I can do something about. It's something I can improve. The danger of sending out, did you enjoy your gig questionnaires on Ticketmaster. I'm sure Ticketmaster, sorry, they sent me an email to review Arthur's Day gig at Ulster Hall, Ryan Wilkinson. Now, what happened in the Ulster Hall? And if something went wrong, why did someone of the Agio not get on to Ticketmaster and say, so by the way, everyone who got tickets to the gig in Ulster Hall, don't ask them how they got on, because they won't have liked it. <laughs> if I was in charge of their marketing next year, on the stroke of midnight, I would want to list back of anything. Yeah? Sorry, I just have a comment there. Sure. So, you know, by actively excluding a uh, participant's review of something, that can cause an absolute social media frenzy. So yeah. We, we had um, a survey online recently, and instead of having a typical screen out that we, you know, it would have a soft screen out saying, thanks so much, we've had enough respondents, it accidentally said, uh, you know, females aren't eligible to complete this. And <laughs> they went, on Facebook, so I okay. understand what you're saying there, but you need a soft screen out and a message like that saying something like, thank you, we have enough respondents of your profile, as opposed to just, because people who are active online will hear about the other surveys, and it just gives them an opportunity to go crazy, and rightfully so. Yeah, potentially. I think uh, that's a really good point. A really, really good point. Um, and like, it is way too late as soon as this comment comes up to do anything about it, as far as I'm concerned. I think you've got to leave it open then. But what I would want is at the stroke of midnight, as soon as every event got back, I would want someone in every location to get on to me and say, okay, what? I'm sure the event was great. I want to know anything that even went slightly wrong. Were the band on time? Was the sound okay? Did they run out of Guinness? You know, what went wrong that could have influenced people's night that we can actually anticipate? There's all going to be things we can't, but what happened in Ulster Hall? And then, if I have any follow-up emails that go out in an automated fashion, I make sure that those who were in the Ulster Hall gig either don't get them or at the start of the email says, we understand there was a difficulty with the lighting or the sound. Um, we're still really interested in your feedback. But instead, you get something like this. Uh, so yes, I absolutely agree. If, if you realize 
as the reviews are coming in that something has gone dramatically wrong, if you're going to stop, don't just turn it off. Make sure that it's a, yeah, a soft response is good. Um, this was another one from Malaysia. We had car this day and the jam was crazy. Plus it didn't start in time, nor was that fun. So who was in charge of the gig? Why was the traffic so bad? And why did the band not come out when they were supposed to? This is great. This is one of my favorite examples of when sentiment analysis goes really wrong. <laughs> so we looked at this. Mm -hmm. Am I the only person in Dublin not out celebrating Arthur's Day? So the sentiment analysis is kind of a little bit confused here because it seems celebrated, it knows that's good, but not out. It realizes that they're not out celebrating, so that's not good. But in reality, even though her hashtag is over it, this means that all of her friends, everyone she knows, is out celebrating Arthur's Day. So she's not, we're actually probably not that worried because all her friends are. And in fact, she's probably kind of going, geez, I, I wouldn't mind being out with all my yeah. friends. Um, Hamish Kane, two more sleeps, folks, till I celebrate Arthur's Day. Some of us have, have to work, you know. Maybe a few of you will join me. It'll be a cracker. Um, mad Arthur's Day yesterday. The Guinness was sweet. Thank you. Um, Guinness Day was a success. Sadly, I had to make a last minute dash home to Loud. The 11.30 bus home is a lonely place to be Arthur's Day. <laughs> now, I read this and I kind of went, geez, maybe there's a huge opportunity here. One, why did Ken come from Loud into Dublin? Was he going to one of our big gigs? And two, if he was, could we, would it be very expensive or would it be feasible to lay on transport home for people at half 12 or one o'clock instead? Could, could we do that? Would it make sense? Would the added value we get from having people there later be worth it? So even though this is a positive and they had a good time, they had to leave in their eyes a little early. And I'm sure it is a lonely place to be. But I think, again, it's something that we could learn from if we were, if we were the agile. Again, this was, um, this was deemed extremely negative by our, our sentiment analysis until we stepped in. Lots of sore heads in work today. Arthur's Day to blame. Sufferers spoke of it as the new Paddy's Day. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Hugely positive. Um, my head is killing me. Again, really negative in the sentiment analysis, so we have to switch it. But well worth it to Martha. Arthur's Day was awesome. Um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.